what's up guys welcome to uh this shop short uh this may not seem like a really necessary topic to discuss uh, but i have seen this question i'm about to do it so i thought i would talk about for a second why the question would be is it important to clean your your dual sport adventure bike your jeep tacoma whatever it is that you're site you're you're off-roading in and you come back from a ride or from a trip and it's it's muddy it's sandy it looks cool we like to ride around show it off um you know let you know that we're not just mall crawlers or you know street cruisers like we actually get out and do stuff with them uh but is it necessary to wash it i mean you're going to get it right back out you're going to get it dirty again why would i bother washing it and cleaning it up well there's a few reasons uh number one to me in my opinion a certain level of dirty like this bike is it's cool for a day or two but after a while it turns from being dirty from a cool trip to dirty because you're just lazy and you don't clean your stuff up <laughs> it just you know that's that's just you know my opinion i'll see somebody's jeep or something and i'm like oh man they had a good trip but if i see it a week or two later and it's still <laughs> but i'm like you know we get it but that one is more so just my opinion on on stuff there's kind of a timeline as to how long you can wear that mud uh proudfully and then it starts to get to us like okay let's let's clean it off and 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 get get new mud on it uh but really more practically from a maintenance perspective um if you're like me and you wrench you work on your own stuff uh, it's aggravating to try to work on something, get to a bolt if it's just caked in hard mud because it was never cleaned. If you've got Allen head bolts or anything like that, you know that they can get full of dirt and mud. And if that stuff sits in there for too long, it's like a rock. And uh, just that working on stuff, you're trying to keep things clean anywhere that there's grease, oil, you're trying to keep it clean while you're working and there's sand falling into it. So, you know, just from a maintenance perspective, just from working on it, I want to know that when I lay my hands on this bike or my or, or termite or, or anything in here to work on, I like to know that it's it's clean. Um, now, I don't mean you won't have to wash it before, but you know what I'm saying? Like, this bike is not going to have clay on it that's been on there since last year that's baked hard and all that kind of stuff. It, it, keep it clean, then if I work on it, it's it makes things just a lot better. Uh, but then overall, just the general wear and tear longevity of stuff. Uh, but like you see this bike, how dirty it is. And yes, it looks cool. This is this is South Mississippi typical here. A lot of sand, a lot of clay, a lot of rocks. Um, that's That does not mix well with finishes, with metal. Uh, when you got things like your chain, any little uh, arm, anything from carburetor to anywhere metal is moving on metal. Yes, there's bushings, yeah, there's grease, there's, there's provisions for that. But that this stuff, the longer you let it sit, it's going to find a way in there. It's going to find a way into the bearings. It's going to find a way into that spot. And it's not going to be nice when it gets in there and, and it's just going to eat up. So, so keeping things clean, I know like on termite, it's, it's hard to get under there sometimes to clean out ball joints, tie rod ends, stuff like that. But doing so at least the best you can makes it better when you do have to get under there. Plus, you know, just the wear and tear on anything from seals to bearings to just places where metal just contacts each other anything like that it's just going to help um, so that's kind of my reasons why i think it's important to keep stuff clean even though i know i'm going to clean this thing and hopefully by next weekend it'll be dirty again uh, but i'm going to show you in a second how i do this stuff quickly but like for the xr here it's about to undergo uh, a maintenance schedule which means i'm going to be pulling the seat the tank i'm going to be checking my valve adjustment i'm going to be changing the oil i'm going to be messing with the suspension I'm going to give this bike a go through. Uh, I've put 4,000 miles on it since I've had it. And uh, other than change the oil, I have not done a lot to it. So I'm going to just go through it, make sure everything's good. And, uh, you know, so I want it clean to do that. Then, you know, further down the road, kind of the rarer type situation, but still necessary, is anywhere where there's welds, um, frame, suspension stuff, there's a possibility when you're off road and you're going to break something, you're going to crack something. And if you've got mud that just stays on that crack, you never know it. And you just keep running it and you just keep abusing it. And of course the crack and the weld gets worse and worse and worse and worse. 
So a lot of times when you're cleaning, you will see something that needs to be addressed um, that you can't hear, you can't feel, uh, but you look and you say, oh man, that weld got a crack in it. So, you know what I mean? So little things like that, just for the overall longevity and maintenance of vehicles, I think it's important to keep them. You don't have to showroom clean it and spit shine it every time, but just to keep the, the, the loose stuff. Let me show you real quick what I do that makes this fast and easy. And uh, you may have a better method than I do, but this is what I do and it works. So let me show you what I got. So for starters, I'm a big gasoline guy, uh, but this little cheap power washer, I don't remember what I paid for it. It's well under a hundred bucks or was at the time from Harbor Freight has done fantastic. I have cleaned this bike multiple times, termite. I mean, if you've watched this channel, you've seen me drag this thing out and it just works. I don't have to, you know, I've had, um, you can see, well, you can't see it behind the bushes. There's my old pressure washer and it may go six months where I didn't run it or something and I'd have to rebuild the carburetor or do something like that. This, uh, I plug it in, hook the water to it and it just goes. Um, so this little guy works well. It also doesn't put out a massive amount of pressure, which is in my opinion, a good thing. When you're pressure washing these bikes, if you do so, you don't want to be blasting all the pressure anywhere that there's a gasket, uh, a bearings, you know, a seal, anything like that, because you know, you get too much pressure, you can force water through those areas. And so I, I like the fact that this one does not have a massive amount of, of, of pressure behind it. I don't believe in washing your car with a pressure washer, at least unless you know how to do it. Uh, cause I've watched a lot of people blast paint and clear coat off of their cars because they were right up on it with a pressure washer and there was a chip and it got behind that chip and it just took everything it wanted. So I like this one being, it's rated at 1750. It does a great job. So let me show you now what I mix, uh, to kind of just give this thing an initial soak and, uh, and we'll go from there. All right. I don't have any kind of secret sauce or anything like that when it comes to washing this thing, but there's a select few ingredients that I'll kind of throw together and it seems to clean it pretty good. Um, one is just a good car wash and wax. This is from Poppy's Patina when we did termite. Uh, I also have a turtle wax, uh, anything that's like a wash and wax, just a good soap. Um, that seems to clean good, but I will couple it with a good dishwashing detergent, something that is going to clean a little bit harder. It's got a little degreaser in it. That's going to help, you know, some areas. Some of you may watch this and go, that's not doing anything. It may not, but it makes me feel better. I throw some of that in there. And then just a dash. You don't want to go too much, but a little bit of simple green in there kind of goes a little ways as far as helping break stuff down and keep things clean. And again, if you do this regularly, you never, you're never really cleaning off baked on grease and oil. You're just cleaning off whatever dirt and stuff's on there from your recent trip. So if you keep it clean, it makes it easier to keep it clean and that makes any sense. So doing this, and then once I get the bike clean, I'll show you what my next step is, and, uh, and we'll call this video done. let the bike it's hot out here today so just kind of let it sit in the sun for a second drip drip dry and then i just take my blower and just kind of blow off all the loose because right around here all your gauges and stuff you know water just puddles in there and you can't get in there and drive with a towel so i just blow it out with this or air compressor whatever you got and then uh usually do that let it drip dry a little bit more and it's and it's good to go so So as you can see, the bike is clean. And if you noticed in the time lapse, I didn't put a brush to it. I don't use a brush. Every 
I mean, if it's just absolutely gets disgusting and trashed and every now and then you may need to put a brush on it, but for the most part, pressure washer, soak it down with the, the little mixture I showed you, hosing it off, gets it for the most part. And part of that is if you keep it clean, it's easier to keep clean. And then I use, and there's a lot of products. This is not like saying this is my favorite one. I found this one at Walmart. And so I'm trying it out, but this is just uh, DuPont brand showroom motorcycle detailing polish. Uh, if you go to any of your, you know, ATV places, anything like that, the four-wheeler, dirt bike, whatever, uh, they're usually going to sell products very similar to this. Maximum makes some good stuff. Again, I don't know which one's better than this. I'm not trying to say either one, but uh, this is one you just soak pretty much everything down with the exception of like your seat and your brake rotors and stuff like that. Uh, but all your plastics, pretty much anything on this bike, you just spray it down with this, let it set for a second, and then just take your microfiber cloth or whatever, kind of wipe it, get all the, the build up off, and it leaves a little layer on your bike. And so when you come to clean it next time, it makes it just everything clean off 10 times easier. So. This is one of those things, like I said, I got this at Walmart. And I just saw it one day and I was like, hey, there's, well, we'll try it. And it works pretty good. Um, so I go over like all of my boots, fender, obviously tank, little tool bag here. I do my rims with this. Uh, I don't really spray it on my, uh, you know, spray it on your pipes or anything like that. It's going to get hot. I don't put it on my clear windshield or nothing like that. Uh, I'm not saying you can't. I just don't. But any of my plastics, anything rubber my cables anything like that i'm going to spray it down with this it makes it look brand new makes it look nice back in the 90s when we raced uh dirt bikes and four wheelers and did all the motocross stuff uh, we, we we would spray our bikes down uh i raced quads and stuff we would spray them all down with wd-40 to make the plastics look good um wouldn't recommend doing that now uh obviously because wd-40 is stupid expensive but it don't work as good as this stuff does uh, but anyway, you do this, makes any of your faded black plastics look, look good again. And then I, uh, I usually use just a little wire brush, but I found this the other day at Walmart on the clearance aisle for four bucks. So it's just a chain brush. Uh, it's got the, the three angles, three sides of a chain that you can do. Um, uh, so I'll be using that from now on. And I, this is the, uh, the, the X-Link chain. It doesn't require lube necessarily. Uh, but I do spray on like this, uh, and again, Walmart. I was just in there a while back and I saw all these and so I bought them. Figured we'd try them out. Um, this is just a DuPont brand chain saver and it's just a a wax essentially that you put on there and this just makes it easier to clean. Uh, so I clean my chain, give it a little coat of this, makes it clean up better in the future. That's what I do. I'm not saying you have to do that. I'm not saying that's the best way to do it. It's just what I do. And it seems to when I go to clean the bike up, it cleans up. And uh, so that's what I do, guys. That's my recommendations and kind of somewhat of a how-to. Uh, I know it may seem dumb, but anybody getting into these things or maybe you just got a Jeep and you wonder, you know, is it cool, whatever. I just went off-roading for the first time. Keep it, keep your suspension stuff. Keep it all clean. Make it easier to work on. Make it easier to see if you have a problem and your parts will last a little bit longer. And um, so, yeah, it's cool to ride around with the dirt and the mud for a little bit, but eventually you do want to clean it off. Take care of your stuff. It'll take care of you. It'll do well. My personal belief is that that one of the top top best things that you can do for dependability and longevity out of anything is just general good maintenance. That's what I got today. Give us a like and a subscribe if you like this video. Uh, we're trying to reach 3,000 followers. We've been doing YouTube for four years now, and we're just trying to grow the channel. So give us a like. Give us a subscribe. Comment below. We'd like to talk to you, get to know you. Uh, but other than that, man. We'll see y'all later.